Hey, Jim Bergman on behalf of AccuTools. I uh, want to do a little video today on evacuation, specifically covering how deep a vacuum we want to go and then also micron gauge placement. So I'm going to have Val come over here for just a minute and take a look at these couple of micron gauges. I have two micron gauges on the system and they're both at about, one's at 56 microns and one's at 52 microns. They're about four microns apart. And the system's been stabilized for a few minutes and you can see I've got it isolated here with a core tool. What I've got though is I've got a five ton Goodman aluminum coil and I've got 50 foot of 7 8 tubing, 50 foot of 3 8 tubing, uh, JB 8.4 CFM pump and uh, we just really just pulled this thing down to do a, a proper dehydration. And this is going to be probably more important than ever as we move towards uh, heat pumps and especially in the heating season. And the reason is, is if you take a look at this uh, heat pump heating chart, and I've got a couple laid out right here. You can see we've got a three ton heat pump system and at 60 degrees indoor dry bulb and at a zero degree outdoor dry bulb, we're at about a 38 uh, PSI suction. And that means we're about 10 degrees below zero um, on, the, on the heat pump coil outside itself. So in other words, in order for heat to travel from the outdoors, which is zero degrees, into a coil, it has to, the coil has to be physically colder, so it has to be about 10 degrees below zero. Well, that's a 10 degree also dew point temperature. So if we have any moisture in that system and that moisture falls below 10 degrees, it's gonna to start to fall out in the system and it's gonna immediately obviously turn to ice. And that ice is going to freeze uh, in the outdoor metering device and the heat pump will be done at that point. And so it's super important that we understand a couple of things when it comes to vacuum, because ultimately what we're doing is the de degassing happens very quickly but the dehydration is what takes a lot of time. And once we're down below 1,000 microns, 99% of the load and 99.9% .9 of the load is moisture. And so what we're really doing is dehydrating that tubing or getting the moisture out of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and break the vacuum on this system here for just a minute, because I have it down here. And I, I think it's really important to understand is when we open this up, right now we're at a, a 55 degree, negative 55 degree dew point. So that means that no moisture would even condense inside this tubing unless it got to below negative 55 degrees. Now that's super dry. That's as dry as we're gonna get with a desiccant dryer on the machine. But the reason we wanna get this dry is so we don't add moisture back into the refrigerant. I'll show you that in just a second here in a guide here. But as soon as I open up this valve and we suck in the, the shop air into this, it is literally like we're taking a, uh, uh, taking a uh, water and pouring it onto a paper towel. All this super dry tubing is going to suck up moisture and so will this line, so will everything here, is going to suck up moisture as fast as we break that vacuum. And you can see we're already at high pressure, so our vacuum is broken on the system. We're, we have the vacuum completely broken and now the, the system is, is sopping wet at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to talk about a couple things here. And let's before we get started here, let's take a look at a couple things in the uh, review of vacuum for service engineers. So if we go here, this is a super important chart. And by the way, if you haven't bought this book here, it's Review of Vacuum for Service Engineers. Uh, you can get it at TrueTech Tools. We, we reprinted it a couple of years ago. But on page 68 of that guide here, what we've got is a dew point temperature and parts per million across, and then we've got millimeters of mercury on here. So at 100 microns, at 100 microns of pressure, we're at a dew point of negative 40, at 200, negative 30, at 300, negative 20, at 500, negative 10. Now at zero, we're at negative 10, right? Because we said before, at zero degrees outdoors temperature, we're gonna be about 10 degrees colder than that because uh, we're at negative 10, right? So we are at dew point at this point. So 500 microns is not enough for a heat pump system. Now, if you go back to this book, now again, this was written in 1959, and we sk skip ahead here to page 73 on this guide here. It says, uh, with such a gauge, you continue the exhausting cycle up to a pressure of 100 microns and check the equilibrium pressure with a drop test. The permissible rise is generally set at one micron per minute. Finishing pressures of 100 to 200 microns are desirable to make the air in the, in, in the system so rare that there's only a significant amount of weight left of it 
for the refrigerant to absorb, thereby, therefore, therefore establishing good control over the subsequent head pressure of the compressor. So this is about air and moisture, right? And what we want to do again is we want to get that down to a dew point that is deep enough that we're not going to uh, have problems with moisture in that system. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to start this vacuum pump up. Now I'm doing a single hose evacuation. So I've got one hose connected to this. What we here is our suction service valve of the system. So I'm pulling on this big suction line. It goes all the way through, through the coil. And then this is my liquid uh, service line. So I'm literally pulling from the pump, well, actually, if you want to say this is the area of highest pressure, pulling all the way through that 3 h tubing, through the coil, through the metering device, and then back through the vacuum line and into the pump. So this is what we call a single hose evacuation. For most residential service technicians, this is all you're going to have to do. So we'll go ahead and we'll flip on this pump. This is a DC start, so it takes a second to start up. It's a DC motor. And uh, we'll go ahead and open up the, uh, the ballast, which is open, and I guess we've got to open up here. So let's see here, ballast is closed and I'm gonna open up the service valve. You can see we're pulling out a ton of air right now. All right, so if I were to take a, a match in front of this for just a second here, you can see it, it blows out immediately because there's so much air coming out of the system, I can't even light it on here, right? And as this is running, we're reducing the pressure further and further. The pump will get quieter and quieter. You can see right now, we just started reading on this gauge right here. So this is the one in the pump, so we're at 14. We're just now starting to read on here, and then if you go up here, you can see we're even higher. So we'll let this run for just a minute, but what I want you to see here is that the lowest pressure is here. We're at about, let's say, it's pretty going really fast right now, but we'll let us slow down just a little bit. But we're at, a, we're at 900 microns here, and we're at still at 4,000 microns over here. So if we were to get down to 500, let's say, and we're crossing 500 right now and shut up the pump, we're still at 2,000 microns on the far side of the system. So shutting off the pump when you hit 500 microns on the pump is not a good idea because we're still at 2,000 microns and we're at a dew point here if we go to the uh, mode here and we scroll through here, I believe up I'm on a run mode here, but we're at a 9.5, 10 degrees, uh, 10 degree uh, saturation temperature right now, right? So open this back up again, but you can see even though we hit 500, it's not near enough. Now, we'll open this back up again, let it run a little bit longer here. And we're still connected to this gauge here, so you can see we're in a dehydrating phase. So let this come down. And now that gauge is at the farthest point of the system, so that gauge is this gauge right here, right? And you can see now we're at 220 microns at the pump. We're at 500 microns at the inlet to the suction line and we're still at 1,400 microns at the far end of the system. Now, you may be wondering, well, why is this happening this way? Because I thought pressure exerts force equal in all directions. Well, don't forget, the pressure f travels from high to low. So the pump is creating an area of low pressure. This is the lowest pressure in the system, and we're pushing the air out of the system into the pump, right? Vacuum pumps don't suck pressure pushes into the low pressure area created by the pump. Pressure only travels from high to low. So the highest pressure is at the far side of the system here. We're at 800 microns here at the far side of the system. We're at 200 microns at the inlet to the vapor line, and we're at 83 microns at the pump. So we have this tremendous amount of differential pressure between here and here that's creating the flow through this hose right here, right? As we get deeper and deeper in vacuum, these two gauges will get closer and closer together and to the point which the flow will eventually stop. And so we're gonna let this run for a few minutes and we'll come back when this is uh, down here and I'm gonna show you the next step, which is, actually, which is doing what's called a decay test to make sure that our vacuum is, uh, is holding and we're dry enough to allow the refrigerant into the system. All right, so now we're approaching the 100 micron mark. We're right at uh, 125 microns here, and uh, we're gonna let this come down a little further. But I want you to take a look at a couple of things right here. Our vacuum gauge is on the pump is down to around 24 microns, and the pump will pull around 20 microns or so, uh, but you gotta remember it's attached to the system, so it's not gonna hit its ultimate pull like it would if we had it tied to a, you know, directly to the gauge. And then you can see over here, we're at 37 microns, so there's still differential pressure, meaning there's still flow, 
but the flow now is very, very small because we only have about uh, 36 and 24. We have about uh, um, 12 microns of, of differential pressure between those, and we're at 115 microns here on the far side of the system, and that's still coming down. Now, just to give you an idea of the amount of time this took here, we, this is on the graph here, we're down at 50, about 50 microns right here. And then we broke the atmospheric pressure. And then I started this back up here again. I'll tap on the graph here. This was about at, uh, we'll get right to the right spot here. This is about seven minutes is where we started this. So that's seven minutes and we are at 17 minutes here. So this vacuum took 10 minutes for us to get from atmospheric pressure, wet system, all the way down to 100 microns, right? Now, the reason I opened this up with atmospheric air and didn't break it with nitrogen is because I wanted to show you a wet system. I wanted to make sure we had air in the system, not nitrogen in the system, because that would even come down faster. So the single hose, single evacuation hose, five ton system, 50 foot of seven eighths, 50 foot of three eighths tubing, far side of the system at 100 microns, about 10 minutes to achieve that. It's not a monumental task to get vacuums this deep. Now, I've got the system where I want it, and I'm gonna have Val come in here close for a minute. The core tool is a ball valve, and this ball valve actually has trapped gas here. And I'm gonna have her focus on this micron gauge for a second. As, as I slowly close this core tool off, and you wanna slowly close this, you're gonna see the micron gauge will jump. And when it jumps, you want to pause just a second because that's trapped gases in the side of the core tool that we want to get out. I'm going to slowly close this off and get it to the point where it's completely closed. Now my pump is isolated. An important part when you uh, are, are using a pump like this, you don't want to just shut off the pump. You want to open up the ballast for a second. That's going to uh, get the oil up in the front end of the pump. and then shut the pump off, and then I'm gonna go ahead and break the vacuum here so we don't have any uh, oil get sucked out of the pump. So now it's wide open the atmosphere again, so between here and here is an atmospheric pressure. And you can see now, we're still dropping on this side of the system, right? We're at 92 microns, 95, 92.4, 3, 2, 1. Well, why is that pressure still dropping? Well, again, remember what happened here is this pump is reducing the pressure, so now this Suction line is the area of lowest pressure, and that, and that pressure is very slowly equalizing. Now, when air is, is, when we get this little bit of air in the system, it's so, so small amount of air that it actually flows about like molasses. So we have this pressure over here that's continuing to drop because pressure is going from the high side to the, to the low side of the system. Now, the gauge here just uh, started beeping here. I want you to come over here for just a second. It's telling us to, it's saying to continue here, to isolate the system and continue. And so now it's in decay. So we're going to allow the decay test to go for a few seconds. And we're going to look at a couple different things here. We're still falling at five microns per minute. Our saturation temperature is negative 47.1. And now we just passed our decay test. So I hit finish and save here and dismiss. So what happened here is that the gauge automatically calculated that we were going to pass the decay and we're not gonna go above 200 microns. And you can see we're still at 85 microns here. So it continued to drop quite a bit after we shut the, the vacuum pump off. But this negative 43 is not so, we're not that far below the dew point, it's, but it's so we've pulled out so much moisture that our, that our, our, our filter dryer now can manage that moisture. If we would have shut this off at 1,000 microns or 2,000 microns, we'd have so much moisture in the system that that dryer would be completely saturated, meaning every drop of liquid that goes into the dryer comes out the other side. So again, it's really important, a couple things to, to talk about in this video that are really important. You do not want your vacuum gauge on your vacuum pump. Ideally, you do not want your vacuum gauge on the core tool. We can put it here and we isolate, but we, you know, we're going to find that out during the decay test. The pressure is going to rise. It's going to take longer to, satis to, to, to satisfy out. If we're all, all the way here at the far side of the system, um, this is the ideal place to measure vacuum. So now I know my vacuum here is at 63 microns, and my vacuum here is at 82 microns. My system is clean, dry, and tight. And that's the key thing. We want to make sure that we get the vacuum gauge as far away as we can. If I'm here, you can see I'm still good. I'm at 63 microns of pressure here. I didn't lose a lot, 
but it went up a little bit from where it was when I isolated the core tool. We were about 40 microns when I isolated the core tool. We're at 64 microns. Our rise rate here, I'm gonna hit my leak rate indicator. Let me just get to mode here. I am right now at a leak rate of about two microns a minute. So it still would stabilize out. We'd wanna let that stabilize to about one micron per minute before we actually analyze it. And so you'd wanna wait about 10 to 15 minutes, but ultimately here we're, we're, we're perfect. So that's the key here. Good micron gauge placement, good pump, good pump oil. Um, and you know, one single hose will do the trick for most residential systems and you're good to go. The only time I deviate from one hose is if I was doing a, like a, a compressor uh, change out or have the system open to atmosphere, then I you know, had a, a lot of more moisture removed than I might handle it a little differently. But in this case, that's all we wanna do. And obviously with a, with a vacuum gauge app, we can record all this information and have it uh, so we can document our proper evacuation. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them in the bottom of the video, but I hope this was informational for you and got a little bit out of it. Again, this is Jim on behalf of AccuTools. Thanks a lot for watching.